What up, guys? I came up with a miraculous idea that actually you can have the best of both worlds, the Chinese parts and Japanese parts at the same time. <clears throat> what I mean by this is like the Chinese equivalents of the Japanese parts are actually quite good for like a quarter of the price. Let's take my exhaust for example. On it, it says Shealy. Yeah, it does exactly the same job as the old exhaust. It even rusts exactly the same, which surprised me actually, because I thought it would actually have end up with that runny, rusty colour. But it isn't, it's just surface rust. You know, actual rot rust. But instead it's just surface rust. There's no rot rust at all at the minute. And it's um, 3,000 kilometers on it, 3,500 kilometers on it. And it costs 60 quid, which is a quarter of what the price of the Suzuki um, pattern part was. The pattern version of this actual Suzuki for this bike was 250 pounds onwards, whereas the one I bought was 60 quid. And again, they're both new. They're both new parts. And then it was saying with the mud guard at the front. The mud guard at the front, the genuine version, even for a second hand Suzuki one, it was 25 quid. And for a new one, it was about 70 pounds. But for the Chinese equivalent, new was about 25 quid. Uh, but like I said, with the Chinese versions though, you can end up, they do tend to, uh, as John said, it was like, as Biker Boy said, he said, um, they tend to crack, crack, split, and uh, the other thing is they tend to rattle. But, what I've noticed with mine is, by it being a Chinese, it doesn't rattle. But so far it's been on for over a year, it's been alright. It's like being driven through in the snow and the rain. There's no rust on it yet. Well, that's obviously yet. There's a few dot 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 dots. It will come, but oh well. For the price of it, it's a third less. So in other words, if you go through three, by the time you've gone through one of the other, well, two of the others, say, you're actually up one, aren't you? So you're up 25 quid. Same with the exhaust. If you go through two of those, the equivalent of one of the normal ones, you're up two times, because to do that exhaust takes an hour of wild and that, we did it at home, it's three bolts, it's like three or four bolt, bolts, and the best part was, is that we had to keep changing, the only problem was with the Chinese one, is that the bolts that came with it were absolutely shockingly bad, in fact, that bad, that the, the, the bolt, the first day that I had it on, basically all the bolts fell out, and it didn't sound exactly like it was before. This really, really loud trumpety sound, which is great because you're just making up the racket. So we had to come up with our own bolts in the end, and pop them on, which have now sort of rusted a bit because they aren't made for weather. They aren't made for weather, so they've all rotted. Well, we started to rot it through a little bit. That's the really annoying part with Chinese parts: is some of the bolts don't work or they rust. And then, and then there's the other side, which is Chinese bikes using Japanese parts. One of the biggest problems with Chinese bikes is the loop, the wiring looms are the, basically one of the main causes why the engines don't start, why the engines don't fire, why doesn't the lights work, why doesn't the indicators work, why doesn't this work? Because the wire loom is shockingly bad and all the wires just tend to just perish away. So, they replace, so you can replace them with actually proper wiring of your own or even a Japanese equivalent and there you are, you've got now sort of a start of fully working sort of bike then you'll get problems with the carburetor and the spark and you just change them to the Japanese equivalent so essentially now you've got a Chinese engine block with a Japanese carburetor and a Japanese fuel tap and a Japanese this and a Japanese that so a lot of the parts are Japanese but the engine main is Chinese Same goes for everything else on your bike. For example, like the foot pegs and the gear changer. 
use the gear chain, the gear lever on it is made cheap, more cheaper on um, the Chinese ones. So like I said, like if you bend it by accident, if you try and bend it back, it will snap. The Japanese one can snap, but amazingly, when I when I did bend this, um, when I drop this on the ice, <laughs> when I drop this back on the ice. It bent the gear lever, and then look, it was like college at the time, so basically just literally pushed the bike two, 200 feet to the workshop, got, and bent the lever back, but he did say, if it snaps, it snaps. You know, it tends to be cheap Chinese shit. This was genuine, so it didn't snap. And you got the mirrors, and and the indicators and really well the indicators the indicators are indicators and mirrors tend to be alright <clears throat> alright mirrors tend to be plastic rather than the chrome that's what you tend to get with the Chinese versions they tend to be a plastic chrome rather than an actual chrome chrome <laughs> metal chrome same with the indicators, they tend to be, well actually these are plastic, but they're a different, slightly different design. So it's our first time in like, <laughs> not since pretty much the ride out, that was ages ago. I'll then take two on this bloody video topic. I mean, um, basically, you can have the best of both worlds of Chinese and Japanese back, so. Uh, right. After you. If you're going to repair your, your, Chinese, your Chinese bike, what do you go and use? Not a Chinese part, or do you use a Japanese part? I mean. At the end of the day, Japanese are like three or four times more expensive, but it can make it three or four times more reliable, especially when it comes like to the engine or um, sort of like the suspension or even parts. Because if you're riding a lot, you might crack them more easily. Um, if you ride it hard, or so. Eventually, they both cancel out e each other. Because if you if you've seen all the Chinese body parts, uh, all the Chinese engine parts with Japanese bits, and you replace all the Japanese body parts with Chinese copies, eventually you end up with the same value bike. If you know what I mean, and you end up with sort of same reliability. So. Uh, so like in effect, you get like pretty much the same bike. So now you've got two. So let's take my GN and a Chinese copy of GN at Hartford. Um, I, think we, I think we figured out there's about five different versions. <laughs> That's new. Oh, what's actually can't be that new. Um, and so basically the choice is yours really. Do you have Suzuki written on your parts or do you have, say, whatever, Hartford or well, I've got my exhaust. I forgot now. <laughs> I remembered earlier in the vid. But then four weeks later on, it's like changed. <laughs> And it's kind of up to you, really. Do you want cheap or do you want expensive? Do you want your engine to fire up the first time or do you want to be struggling with your engine? Do you want, you know, it's sort of all these little questions you need to ask yourself first or... Um, it's like, how much mileage are you doing each year? If you're doing a lot of miles on your Chinese bike, maybe it's best to, to put in a Japanese carburetor so it starts up first time in the winter or, and, and, you know, stuff like that. But if you got a Japanese bike and you accidentally fall off it and you break something, and you're doing a few miles a year, is it worth replacing? 
Mm. With a giant Japanese pot? No, maybe not. No. So, um, I'll see you guys later. So, bye bye, guys. So campy. I am so campy.